very special thing and this makes the zone a lot more valuable. Preformed it by hand. Oh, take a look. We have it. Also, it is the cheaper way, so you don't need too much pet. Very interesting lightning effect. Clear hexagonal phantom crystal inside. Please be sure to see the slideshow at the end of the video. Mm -hmm. It is a very valuable stone because gemstones is. very interesting and also very valuable. This is a very good way to make valuable stones from cheap material. If you have fun with me together in gemstones, so please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up or a comment. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. Give me your feedbacks. Thank you very much. Hi viewers, today I want to show you two very special topazes. When you have a lot of rough pieces like me, then it is a very good option to tumble your stones or polish your stones in a tumbler. I use a vibration tumbler and you see my receipt for success for a super high gloss polishing of your gemstones or your roughs. In my video on my channel, why you should tumble or polish your stones, your roughs, before you cut them to a gemstone. It is because you can find some very very special things in it. These two topazes here, I've tumbled up to 1200 grit silicon carbide, you see it is not a perfect polish but this is enough to see in the stone or take a closer look in the stone you know i love inclusions it is always a very exciting moment when you take a closer look into your stones or roughs and found some very special things in this case in this stone here is some very special i want to show you this i hope you get a good view in the stone here you see we have an area in this stone there is water inside and inside this water, there is a gas bubble. This gas bubble is big enough to see by eyes. This bubble is moving. I hope I can show you this on the video here. Here you see it. We have a moving bubble inclusion, moving gas bubble. This special type of gemstone called anhydro. Anhydro because there is a fluid in the most cases this is water. It is a water filled area in the stone and when you have luck you found some bubbles inside. When you have a lot of luck you found a big bubble and when you have special luck this big bubble is moving like this here. Here you see it. Most of you heard about bubbles in gemstones or gas bubbles in gemstones from quartz. Often, uh, not often but uh, Sometimes when you have luck you found some very special pieces with moving bubbles in quartz called anhydro quartz. But in topaz it is a very special thing and this makes the stone a lot more valuable than a normal piece of rough topaz. You see we've got a, a very very slight blue color on the stone. I hope you can see this. You see a very 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 slightly bluish color in the stone. When you found some special things in your stone like this bubble here, we want to highlight it in our cutted stone or finished gemstone. In this case I want to cut cabochon out of it. This moving bubble inclusion I want to have as the center point of my stone in the middle of the top from my dome. So we have to take a closer look later how we cut this gemstone. The next thing I want to show you is this stone here. It is a little bit foggy inside. Also you found mineral inclusions or phantoms, phantom crystals in gemstones. Here you see, I hope I can catch this good on the camera. Here you see we have a, a very very clear phantom crystal in the stone. This phantom got some beautiful inclusions, but the highlight of this phantom crystal in the stone is the outer shape you see here there are a lot of mineral inclusions around it reflecting inclusions on this side and on this side and a lot of white inclusions it's a little bit like there is an explosion going out from this phantom crystal this is a very special piece and we can cut a very fine cabochon out of this material in this case it is very easy we don't have to 
cut away a lot of material from this bottom part here so we don't destroy the phantom so in this case it is clear we made a very nice cabochon and now our special piece with the moving bubble we have to take a look we have not many material between this inclusion and the crystal so we have to look that this is our center point i want to take this inclusion as the center point of my stone and in the middle of the top of the dome is it possible to make this we have to look that we have enough material for a symmetric dome our inclusion is here and here we have not a lot of material here we have a lot of material also here and here we have enough material so i would say i make the length oval side here we have some another inclusions here but this is not a problem for a beautiful stone like this they can also be stay in the stone makes him interesting first we have to cut a flat surface here from here this is our bottom part look how deep we grind in the stone that we can build up a nice dome that this wonderful rare inclusion here is the center point of our stone we have to look is the bubble moving when our dome is here ah you see here it is moving it is perfect when you hold the the cutted stone like this and watched him and you see oh there's a moving bubble really cool okay it is very good for the viewing angle so we made the length oval here and cut out a beautiful cabochon out of this stone preform and length oval for this wonderful included stone we could make an, an etched design but uh, i prefer to make an oval because of these let's say exploding inclusions they are looking fantastic and i want to save as lot material as possible the first step is preforming by hand you will see some scenes in hyperlapse mode now
Okay, here you see the preform is ready, preforming by hand. Here we have the Langs oval, high dome cap with the mineral inclusions and the phantom crystal here. It is not 100% perfect shape because I've preformed it by hand. Oh, take a look, we have a nice adult resins on the stone. This one was uh, the plan to make a Langs oval also like this, but um, here in this part there was an inclusion it was not very fine so you see i have to made it very thin on this side i don't want to make this side thin like this side so i decide when i cut the stone i made a teardrop or a pier shape you see i've set the inclusion with the moving bubble on the top center point of this piece is the top and here's the center point. So when we take a look at the stone, this angle is perfect for the finished stone when we take a look at it to see the bubble is moving. The next step is we dot them on the dot stick so we got uh, much better control. I'll show you a few scenes how I dot the stones. The first step before I dot my stones is I use my self-made liquid. My subscribers and followers and viewers know it is made of classical dop wax and alcohol. We only need a thin layer on our stone. It is to avoid that the stone pops off the dop when we use the classical dop wax. This is the best method for the best adhesion of your stones on a dop stick with classical dop wax. Only this thin layer here is enough. I use this these two aluminum dop sticks, self-made aluminum dop sticks, dip them a short moment in the liquid so we get a thin layer of dop wax on the stick, let them dry. When the stones are dry we warm up the stones, after that we prepare our sticks with dop wax and then we can dot our stones on the dop stick. This is my self-made oven. It is an aluminum pot and I use two little candles to warm up this pot and on this pot I lay my stones when the thin layer of adhesion is dry. So they slightly warm up and you don't risk any cracks of a too fast heat up. Okay, now you see I have to keep the top sticks here. The stones are warm, yes. And now I show you how I dot my stones. I use a small flame to have a better control for heat up the dot wax. Now I get the warmed up stone and I go a little bit closer to the flame. So we become a faster heat up now. Okay. I think this is a good moment to dock our stone. Now, I'm centering the dock stick on the stone by eyes, and after a short moment, I push the wax on the stick and on the stone. Everything is still very hot, so don't burn your fingers. Okay, now we let the stone and the dot stick cool down. Now I dot the next stone and after that you see some scenes in hyperlapse mode. From the final preforming, then we start with the pre-polishing. And when we are ready with the pre-polishing, we take a closer look at our stones again.
cleaning my machine. It is to avoid scratches at the final preforming or pre-polishing because the next step is we cut or pre-polish the stone on the 800 grit pad. Last step you see in hyperlapse mode you see me make the fine preforming of the topazes. Here you can see how the topaz looks like when I'm ready on the hard diamond discs. I work with these hard diamond discs because it is faster and also it is the cheaper way so you don't need too much pads for these coarse grit grinding. I changed to these pads on an 800 grit. I look that the stone is nearly 100% symmetric by eye. Now we make very very fine corrections that we get a 100% round shape on these soft pads. As far as this step is uh, concerned, I can only recommend everyone who works with pads to buy good pads from well-known manufacturers. Because from my own experience, I can confirm that it is much more pleasant and faster to work with. They last a little longer and also ensure a much better pre-polishing when you work with well-known manufacturer's pets. I get now the 800 pet. Okay. Fresh 800 pet, and now we make the finer preforming or the ultra fine preforming or the first step of pre polishing. Because after this step, we become a very, very good look in the stone, a very fine and shiny, glossy surface. And then we go up to the 5000 pet before we polish the stones. Okay, now enjoy the hyperlapse mode. Okay, now here you see the stones are off the top. You see we've highlighting these inclusions here on the stones. They are polished now. We have to make a flat surface on the bottom and polish the bottom. I've um, made some photos for you to show you that this drop or pier shape got a slightly bluish color 
and when I made the photos the daylight comes from this direction and makes a very interesting light effect here in the stone similar like this effect here so I make a decision I show you these lightning effect what I mean on the photo there you can see it better it is a very interesting lightning effect it is very very cool I decide to let the bottom part of this stone frosted which means we don't pre-polish or polish the back of the stone it is because uh, I think the light effect is uh, only visible when we have this rough bottom part here so I decide to let the bottom frosted I only cut the outer line here of this stone polish it and we let the back side frosted so we got this cool light effect you've seen on the photo this is a very cool gemstone here is the two-phase fluid inclusion with moving bubble we've highlighted in this drop and here you see this stone on the outer surface of this clear phantom here in the stone there are many many mineral inclusions very aesthetic and interesting we've highlighted in the stone the next step is business as usual made a flat surface but I think we have a flat surface on this one so we have to pre-polish and polish the bottom here and mix the finish on the on the outer line so we got a wonderful gemstone with many many interesting mineral inclusions okay you see the next steps in hyperlapse mode and after that we take the final look on our gemstones So we are ready with our stones, you see the bottom or back of the spear or drop shape is frosted. I only made a finish on the outer line which means I round it up a little bit. It is only to avoid splittings or chips when the stone touches metal. This frosted area set a uh, a better background for the highlighted inclusion here the fluid inclusion with the moving bubble inside there is the moving bubble inside this fluid inclusion here okay we got a very fine topaz also here you see this stone is very interesting because we got many many mineral inclusions on the outer surface of these clear hexagonal phantom crystal inside it yes uh, clear hexagonal phantom crystal inside you don't see it because uh, the bottom part was rough and it is not catchable on the camera but now you can take a look what I mean This part here of the stone is a phantom, a phantom with very very clear material inside it. On the outer surface of this very clear material here inside there are sit a lot of interesting inclusions. We've got these mineral inclusions in this part here and this part. And you see we've got these small white inclusions that reminds on a little explosion this is what I mean and when I start the video 
It is all around and looks like an explosion in this gemstone. It's not easy to catch these inclusions on a photo, but I've made some pictures for you. Please be sure to see the slideshow at the end of the video. There you see the results in a photo slideshow. This is a very interesting stone and it is very valuable. Here you see all these internal structures are the result of these mineral inclusions. It is a very valuable stone because it is a unique gemstone. Unique inclusions made gemstones very interesting and also very valuable. Now you see my way, how I work or highlighted special inclusions in gemstones. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope I can inspire you to cut gemstones with inclusions, also with special inclusions like this moving bubble or this mineral inclusions here. This is a very good way to make valuable stones from cheap material. If you have fun with me together in gemstones, so please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up or a comment. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. Give me your feedbacks. Thank you very much. It's a great help. I hope we see us in the next video. So now enjoy the slideshow. Bye bye.